Futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Good day. Ira Epstein of Linen Associates with your agriculture update for this Thursday, the 31st of August, 2017. And the time right now, getting on to 2.10 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Interesting day for those that watch the grains. Big rally in the beans and the corn market, especially the corn market. This is a big time rally in that market. And it comes from making the lowest low of the move and then the market getting a big time reversal. Could be that we saw the lows in the corn for the near term, maybe for a while uh, through harvest. Hard to tell, but at least we have a number that we're going to look at. You got the same type of play happening actually in the crude oil, where you made your lows and then you came back, but I'll talk about that in another one of my videos. I want to ask you all to do me a favor. Tell your friends about these videos. I know the viewership keeps growing, but what makes it grow are people like you. Tell your friends, let them watch it, and what I try to do is cover what you want. As you already know, you can either go to our site and write me if you want certain charts covered. Uh, we publish this primarily because they're public videos through YouTube. You can always go there and write me to cover what you want, and I'll try to bring those charts on for you as well. Got that? All right. So we're looking at a dollar that tried to rally, failed. The euro is up a little bit after getting down to a new low. And remember, tomorrow we get some important data. We're going to get the non-farms payroll, which will impact the dollar and the stock market. And then next week, we're going to get the European Central Bank uh, monetary policy. So you got to look at that. But in the grains, another up day, as we can see in the cotton market, the sugar, a big time reversal. When we took out that outside day down this week, we made the run for the 18 day average and then bang, the market has come reaming right back up. So let's get to the charts. Here we are on the weekly charts. And remember, we're not at the end of the year, a week yet. We are at the end of a month, but not the end of a week. And the market's got this big break. And now the question is, can we get a reversal if you get follow through tomorrow? In order to get a reversal, you got to take out last week's high of 943 and a quarter. And the close for the week was 939. You're all of two and three quarter cents away from that. And uh, the highs, you're knocking on the door already. So the key's going to be right now the higher close if you're going to get a weekly reversal on the chart. As we take a look at a daily area chart of closes, on this particular thrust, you went from 946 and a half down to 933 and a quarter. You're back today to 945 and a quarter, not over that. Now, if it gets over that, some will argue that you got a pattern of a low here in 924, then 923, and the market's starting to work up. I don't know that on soybeans it matters that much. The soybean numbers get impacted later during the growing season, not this early like corn does. Remember, corn's going to go into full harvest very shortly. When we look at a daily bar chart of no beans, you can see you went from 1047 to 921, came down, didn't get a lot of follow through, but we also haven't broken out over this rally high right here. And let's go to that day. You can see it. That day's high was 950 and a half. I would view that if you can close over that on the chart, then you're going to hear people argue that maybe this market has put in a near term low. When we get up to the chart and you look at the swing line, you get to see these numbers so much easier. Here's that chart that I had to back up to to see where the swing line I was. Here it is marked off for you. And the, the way I wrote the indicator, it puts it on. In fact, if you wanted to know all these numbers, the way that I have the indicator written on our charting software, it will post them all for you. I find it, I'm so used to it, I don't need those numbers. And I find they get confusing when I create these videos. But the current pattern, and that's what I care about, is you got a higher high, a lower low. Even if you take out 950 and a half, you still have the lower low and then a higher high. In plain English, it's not trending. That doesn't mean it can't rally. Gold is a market like that. It's rallying, but it's not developing that pattern that I was looking for just yet at least. Might do it today, I'll show you what I mean. When we get to the November beans with the moving averages, yes, you're back over the 18-day average of closes. And if you look at this whole drop, starting at the end of July through August, 
the market closed underneath that 18-day average all this time frame, and suddenly we're back over it. Even this day you closed underneath it. I find that to be important, and that means the market is lost. It's uh, momentum, if you will, to the downside. We'll see that in a minute when we get to the slow stochastic. In terms of trade action, well, it's fighting at the 18-day average of closes. If it can pop through 950 and a half, this number right here, you might be able to get, like I said yesterday, to that 100-day average. And if you get through that, maybe to 967. And these numbers, that 967 is going to fall the way the math of the Bollinger Band is created. Remember, what the Bollinger Band is is an algorithm, these black lines, to keep the market trading within the... Uh, the current ranges 95% of the time. And professionals often look at it that the first challenge of these numbers are areas where pros take money in and out of the market. You can see that back here, how that was working too. Does that mean that at times you can't run these numbers? Of course you can. How do you break out of sideways action? You have to get over it and stay over it or under it and stay under it in order to break out. You're just developing the sideways action though is more important to me. I do not see this pattern as one that runs dramatically to the upside or downside just yet. When we take a look at the slow stochastic momentum, it has turned itself to the upside. So this whole real trend, in my opinion, ended when the slow stochastic, which can convert itself from overbought or oversold to locking in a trend, it locked in a bear trend here when both the red and the dark line, they're called the K and D lines, were going sideways under 20. And when you lost the embedded reading right here on this day, which was August 22nd, the odds favored price going back to the 18-day average of closes. The market gets there. And that really ended the downtrend of this time frame. So since that point, you've been just whipping back and forth on either side of this. Got it? When we come to the meal market, one of the trades that I had told you that I was not liking was the fact that you had the embedded reading in the meal, but you were refusing to break down. And Price momentum often leads actual price. And the fact that this was down here and not breaking down, and then on this day, this uh, Wednesday, and today's only Thursday, you had lost that momentum. And I'm sitting there going, wow, is that market going to make a run for that 18-day average or not? Maybe I'm wrong. Well, now I think I'm pretty accurate on there. Uh, today's high, 380. The 18-day average, 301.30 and look at how momentum has now turned the corner. In the soybean oil market, this has been the stronger part of the market because of the argument going on with biofuels where we're trying to put tariffs, if you will, on Argentine and Indonesian fuels coming to the U.S. So this puts a bid here. Plus, the President Trump is saying that he's very much behind biofuels. So this has put a bid into this market. Is it trending, per se? Well, it's got lower highs, lower lows. Today's high was 35.21. This previous high is 35.25. What it hasn't done is close under the 18-day average, and what it doesn't have is any momentum. It's just in an overbought area. In other words, the market's a very difficult call right there. In the corn market, an important day. You made the lowest low of this whole break since way up here over the $4 mark. Number two, it's an outside day up, it's a key reversal day up, and you lost today at least the downside momentum because the slow stochastic closed over 21. All before that, these were the readings. And look at how much over it, it is. It jumped from two all the way up here. So to get to the 18-day average, that is probably one of the main targets of the market. And then we'll see what it does. But for the time being, until this low is taken out again, I think you're going to see people saying that on pullbacks, if they are short, they probably want to do some covering. When we take a look at the wheat market, Wheat is still bearish, but I know the math of these slow stochastics. Unless you're down hard tomorrow, you're probably going to see in the evening trade, the red line get up and over 20, and that might cause some short covering from people that watch these slow stochastics. And the question is, what happens if you get over 438? Well, you probably get up to the 18-day average. I'm not saying you will, but that would be the probably if you can lose the embedded reading, which you haven't done yet, but I promise you, this is an ugly look, and I'm a guy that really watches this. 
In the sugar market, you made your run for the 18-day average after you had an outside day up. And that was here on Monday. You took that out. You often make a run for the 18-day average, which you did. Then the market reversed itself, and today you're getting the follow-through. And notice where the market stopped. It went up to 1444, right against the upper Bollinger Band. You could follow through a little bit more, but the 100 days also waiting for it, and you have an overbought condition. Yes, the trend turned up because the swing line is now up. Yes, the bias is up, but you are overbought into resistance zones. In the coffee market, the trend is still to the downside. You have lower highs as marked by the red arrows. You have lower lows. You're getting a bounce. Until you lose this embedded reading, and this looks nothing, I think you'd agree with me, like the wheat chart did, uh, this market is still saying on rallies it's going to be sold. In the cocoa market, you have a market that has got a pattern of higher lows, higher highs. It tried to stay under the 18-day average, didn't do it, got back over it today. The bulls have control of this market unless you take out the 1882 level. Should you do that, you're going to have a pattern of lower highs, lower lows at work, so that you've got something you've got to prepare for and look at. In the cotton market, you are overbought into an uptrend in the first resistance area. If you extend, maybe you can get to the upper Bollinger Band. What's going to be in cotton is getting out into the fields in that Houston, Texas area and find out through that whole zone what has happened to the cotton crop that uh, was laying out in the fields. We know that a lot of it at midnight, it didn't matter the day, they were out there the cotton farmers and they they were absolutely getting the cotton ready and they put it in bales storage as much as they could we've seen that storage facilities have been damaged how much damage is the key and i think that's what's keeping the cotton alive at this point doesn't hurt that the other grains have come alive too in the cattle market you're still very much in the bear phase but in oversold condition you got a reading here under 30. In stochastics, I consider any reading under 30 to be bearish, uh, not bearish, oversold. It's already bearish. Now it's getting oversold. And you had today an outside day down. So what we have is a market that should not take out today's highs for the, first, for the next two days if you're not going to break this chart pattern. That's number one. Number two, it's hit a downside target with the trend down. That's all that I can say about it. In the feeder cattle, the market's now got formidable resistance at the 146.77 and a half level to the 146, let's call it 55. That's the Bollinger Band in black, the 100-day average of closes. The trend of the market has higher lows, higher highs. The bias is up because you're over the 18-day average, but it all collapses on you if you take out 141 right here, 141.90. Now, the risk would be if you do that, whatever today's high is, that's a heck of a risk, so don't get me wrong. You're looking at $1,400 or so per contract, but on a chart pattern, that would be the bad part. So we'll see if it can do something like that. In the hog market, this rally looks to me like a short covering rally, not a change of trend. You've kept the embedded reading. You've got lower highs, lower lows. This bounce is away from the lower Bollinger Band. I'm not convinced this market has turned the corner in any manner at all. Now, one of the things I want to talk to you about are some of the publications we make available, such as trading tips from the pros. And I think that you'll find what this does, and it's put together by our friends at Modern Trader Magazine. And by the way, when you ask for this, we can easily give you a one-year subscription to the magazine and their daily market focus. But you get great ideas, simple explanation as to what a lot of traders look at and how this works. Now, here's one of my favorite articles, The Benefits of Relative Strength. And all that relative strength is, is in a, it, it's a different take on momentum. I like slow stochastics. There's an indicator called RSI. But it's all explained. Either give us a call, go to our website. You can always click up here if you're watching me on YouTube as well to bring you right to the forms to fill out. Or underneath us on many websites, it says click here for Iris free information. We'll get you these brochures and others that we have. I think you'll really find them a part of your library that you should have. I'm Ira Epstein. Have yourself a great day, and I'll talk to you all tomorrow.